had a brake line rupture on the lightning here. So it's going to turn into a huge project. We got basically uh, all new brake lines for the rear end, all the solid tubes that go on the axle, and then these calipers have a flex line on them. Flex tube. So we ordered uh, Stiflers makes a kit for the rear end. You get the hard lines, you get the flex lines, and you get the flex tube that goes from the rear axle to the chassis. And then we just went ahead and got the the new lines for the front too. So it's going to be all stainless steel when we get done. I think one of these calipers is locking up, so we ended up just getting uh, all the power stop calipers for it. So this is the stiffler stuff. Got all nice braided lines, stainless steel. So under here, I don't know, it's probably going to be the huge problem. You see where that paper towel is at? That's part of that flex line that goes to the rear end. So what happened is there's a hard line coming back along the frame, and that hard line feeds the flex line that goes to this rear axle. And we ended up destroying this hard line trying to disconnect the flex line. So it looks like there's a union over here towards the center of the truck. We ended up buying a, it's like, I think it's called an intermediate line kit. It looks like it's two lines, but we might be able to just, I think we'll probably get away with just putting the rear one on. If I can get this off without destroying it, hopefully. And then I don't know how this is going to snake through all this. And got the fuel tanking away and all that, so we're gonna find out. So I'm gonna get cracking on that. Making pretty good progress here. We're just chopping everything off the back, and we'll have to uh, swap those pads. But all this stuff's getting replaced, we can chop that off of there. I got that union broken loose, so I'll go over that in a little bit. So right now we're just uh, trying to get all the fluid out of the master cylinder. So uh, I can take that union completely apart without getting bathed in brake fluid. So. I think I'll wait till that's done. I'll get under there with the camera. Um, just soaked it up with that liquid wrench and brought the heat gun over and I almost forgot it. Good thing I didn't. So I was heating up that union with the heat gun, soaking it down with the liquid wrench. You know, you gotta be careful with the heat gun. I mean, it's not really an open flame, but it kind of is inside of there, that heated element. But I mean, for the most part, it's not, it's a lot it's a lot safer than using like a propane torch. So, you know, just kept heating that fitting up, getting some uh, some of that liquid wrench on there, kind of worked it with a little brush, and I used a 15 mil to hold the union, and I had a half inch line wrench. You know, you probably want to use a 15 millimeter line wrench, but the biggest one I got is a 14 mil, but it actually worked out okay. The 15 millimeter open end wrench worked out okay. And then it's like you just want to you just want to crack it loose, and then I had to just keep soaking it up with the liquid wrench and kind of working it back and forth. And now I got it to the point where the fluid's coming out, so we're going to drain the rest of the fluid and we should be able to get that union apart. Okay, I'm trying to show you where this brake line's at. We're on the driver's side of the truck. It's pretty much that union is like right in front of the fuel tank. Right by the uh, fuel filter over here. <coughs> so 
so that is right here is the 15 mil and then that side of the brake line was a half inch this probably would have gone a little bit better I probably should have scuffed down that 15 millimeter union because it's like I don't know there's like just enough rust on there to make it really hard to get the 15 millimeter wrench on there quite honestly I'm not hundred percent that's even a 15 mil just based on the corrosion on there but the 15 mil worked for me so like I said you want to use that heat gun you know heat it up soak it up with some uh, penetrant lubricant I got a little baby brush here that I was trying to knock all the barnacles off with so I mean take your time this is one of those things where you know you get frustrated you're gonna bend and break this stuff and it's a lot easier to just replace one line than this other line I think goes up to the ABS module so who knows what kind of fun that would entail trying to get that done <clears throat> and quite honestly this the line coming from the front looks like it's in mint condition so that'll be fine so now I gotta figure out what's going on with routing this thing but this was probably the biggest concern with doing this whole job so we'll see dig into this and see how this line comes out we're at the back of the truck here this is the left rear wheel so up on the frame here there's a mounting nut that holds a bracket and that's what's holding that intermediate line so we ended up taking that nut off and you can kind of get the brake line up and we're trying to break this fitting loose but obviously it broke so that's why we're replacing this line but just so you know that's where that's at that's a 15 mil so you can just get that nut off of there and and you'll be able to get access this is that flex line that goes back to the to the rear axle so we got that stiffler stuff that's going to be all braided stainless now so like I said we're going to figure out sneaking that line out of the frame rail All right, so our plan of uh, just putting the rear line on got kind of destroyed by the, there's different size fittings on here versus the stock line. So we had to take off the front line that goes to the ABS module. So 730 seconds, pulls out the bolts going around the perimeter of the uh, fender here to get the splash shield out uh, you're gonna want to get like a, a real fork tool for pulling uh, bush clips out there were a couple of harnesses that were pushed onto that I think one is for the ABS because I remember taking that off doing the sensor when we did that last year and I think this loom is the other one that's pushed in so you got to pop those off of the uh, splash shield get the shield out so then you have access to ABS module and it's a lot easier to get leverage and uh, bust that line loose. And there are clips holding this line on. There's a, there's a clip back behind that A-arm back there. You just gotta get like a, like a little tiny screwdriver in there and it'll pop open that clip. And then down here, don't know if I can really film this, but that's one of the clips right there. There's a couple of them. I think there's another one. I probably can't really film this, but it's it's hiding back there. So you got a couple clips. And I think there's one more clip where it goes over the frame to the other side, which is where you saw it earlier in the video. <clears throat> so the big problem being the size of this fitting does not match up to that line that we have. So the rear part of these, the two new lines will not just screw right into this. So we got this front line, it's got to be fed in there. And then it came with a regular union. And the union's going to tie these two together. Now the real question is how we're going to get the new lines in without destroying them. But let's see what happens. It's going to be fun. Kind of a shame having to take this line off because it's in really good shape. But it is pretty much an exact bend. I mean, pretty close anyways, close enough. Pretty good bend job. Got that line on there. 
You can see that bush clip. Might be able to get a shot from the top. There's like a Yeah. So that holds a line. It doesn't look like it's on there. It's okay, I'll straighten that out. So reposition that, but down here you got there's a clip right there. So kind of the big deal with this is you have to get the line kind of facing the passenger side to start feeding it in. And you're basically gonna feed it in past this uh, body bushing. And I think we had it pretty much like upside down until we got it in there and then we could rotate it around and the fitting would line up with the ABS module. And that's another one of those clips. I was telling you there's two on this side. There's the other one. You can kind of see it, that black piece right there. So then it sneaks around to the other side here. And there's actually another, if you can see that. So there's another clip on top of the frame and then that's where that needs to sit. So this is ready. Uh, we're gonna put a union on that and that'll fit onto the line going back to the splitter. So to start feeding this rear line in. Well, yeah, taking out the splash shield's really the way to do this. Gives you a lot more access to all this stuff. So I would just take the splash shield off and then we actually jack this side up a little bit higher. So we had more room to manipulate the line going up in there. All right, so we fed the line in. I started on this side and just fed it towards the back of the truck and that worked out perfectly. Didn't really have any issues. I think the only problem was my shirt getting caught in the creeper. But uh, there was enough room to kind of twist the line, you know, around the way we had to and it just went right up in here. So you got, try to film this. That's one of the clips. And then there's two more, there's another one. I think you can see it so it's kind of buried up there in the frame and there's another one exactly like that it's a black clip it's pretty much right next to the fuel tank right there and then uh, I think that's it for clips and then I think the end of it gets cinched down with that bolt that goes through the chassis yeah but so right now we're gonna just leave this okay I'm gonna leave the union off of there so we can we got some wiggle room and uh, so now we're down to I think we're I, I don't want to say it in jinx us but I think we're fairly home free here just got to run all the new stuff on the back <clears throat> get the lines the flex lines and all that some hard lines to run on the axle tubes and uh, the new calipers to throw on there and then after that the only thing to do up front are these uh well we got the calipers for the front too and we got to break off these uh, rubber hoses. We're going to put the stainless steel tubes on there. And then I'm just going to leave the splash shield off because, I don't know, that fitting is a little long. So we'll see when we get some brake fluid in there if that thing's seated or not. Before I put the shield in and that's puking fluid everywhere, we got to pull it back out. So we'll just wait on that. half inch bolt holding that splitter onto the top of the axle assembly. Bang that off of there. Got the calipers on there, the new braided lines. That splitter piece.
That splitter's got a little bushing that goes in there. See it at the bottom. Fits in there pretty nice. So then uh, in the center here, that flex line comes up. Goes to that bracket. And got the new line in the rail. And that's the union that joins the front and rear together. And then that's the line that goes up to the ABS module. guys just heating it up with that heat gun and then using this block of wood to hold this bracket to keep it from flexing we used a little brush to kind of brush inside of there Ten mil bolt holding on that bracket.
I think that line's bent. And it's, you know what I mean? That fitting can't back up the line now. All right, so on the driver's side, the uh, this yeah. brake line just didn't want to, or yeah, passenger side, this brake line just didn't want to come loose from that. Uh, the hose going to the caliper. So, ended up chopping this thing up. Use the cutoff tool, face shield, dust mask. Definitely don't want to breathe whatever's coming off of there. But uh, just kind of trying to chop into it to relieve the stress, but also not destroy the fitting. So got enough cuts in there for it to relieve the stress and that started coming off. Try to get you guys up to speed here because in typical my videos fashion, there's been plenty of things that have happened that didn't get filmed. So we finally, you know, we got this hose off of this side. And then, uh, you know, when I went to cut this thing, I got into some of the threads, which I tried not to. Obviously, can't really see where you're cutting when you're doing it. But so anyways, I nicked the threads on this uh, brake line. And so we went to put the stainless hose on there and it wasn't tightening up. So we're kind of freaking out. And then finally, we already had the hose on the other side. And I thought, well, let's grab the other hose and see if it'll screw on here. So the holes that was on the driver's side actually fit here on the passenger side and, and it also, you know, we swapped the lines and it fits on the other side too. So I don't know if these are supposed to be side specific, but got that sorted out. So uh, we got the wrong calipers for the front here. So we're just reusing the old ones until the new ones show up. So I think we're pretty much ready now to uh, Get some brake fluid in here and try bleeding them down and see where this thing is going to leak from with all these new fittings on here. I'm sure something's probably not snugged up good enough, but we'll find out. And the other thing is uh, these little uh, line holders, they were not big enough for that bolt size. So we had to uh, kind of clearance them out with a little stone on a Dremel tool. To enlarge that hole but other than that I think we're ready to uh, get some fluid in here and see what's gonna happen all right we have to kind of do a reverse bleed on this since the whole system's been basically evacuated and we're starting from nothing we're going to you know usually if you bleed brakes you start on the wheel that's farthest from the master cylinder which on most cars is the right rear so you go right rear left rear right front left front left and right are always in reference to how the driver sits in the vehicle so driver's side is left side passenger side is right side so <clears throat> what we're gonna do here I'm gonna open the bleeder I'm gonna tell my dad to push he's gonna push the pedal and hold it down he's gonna tell me down that's when I'm going to tighten up that bleeder and I'll tell him to release the pedal and we're basically we're going to we're going to pump fluid through when that bleeder is open where it's like when usually bleed breaks you're pumping up the system and and then using pressure so when, with this we're not gonna use the pressure we just want to push fluid through to, to refill the system and then we'll do a, a classic brake bleed on there so Always wear your safety glasses because brake fluid in your eyes is not going to make you happy. All right, you ready? Yep. All right, push. Down. 
release, push, <coughs> down, release, push, Release, push, down, all right, let go, all right, so we got a pretty decent uh, stream of fluid coming out, so like I said, now I'm going to go to the, uh, the right side front. And we're going to get some fluid coming out of that caliper and then we'll work our way to the back. Okay guys, I'm not going to bore you with this whole thing, but um, so I did, we did the left front, did the right front, did the left rear, and now we're going to finish up with the right rear. So I'll show you finishing up the right rear here. I push. Release. Push. <clears throat> Down. Release. Push. Release, push, down. All right, you can let off. <coughs> How does that pedal feel? Actually, hold on. feel got something or it's real spongy it's going down okay all right let's start bleeding uh. all right so now we've pretty much got fluid coming to all four corners so we're ready to start bleeding this stuff down so we're going to go back to a conventional bleed I'm gonna say pump. My dad's gonna pump the pedal three times and hold it, holding pressure. He's gonna say holding. That's my cue to open the bleeder. Then the pedal's gonna to go to the floor. He's gonna say down and hold it to the floor. When he says down, I'm going to close that bleeder and then I'll tell him to pump again. So whoever's pumping the pedal, like, just always keep pressure on that pedal until someone tells you to let off the pedal. It's pretty much the safest way to not reintroduce air. I mean, it's not really a big deal. You can bleed it back out, but just always err on the side of keeping that pedal down. All right, pump. We got a leak back here. All right, so you can see we got fluid coming out of that splitter. We're gonna have to tighten that up. All right, you can let off the pedal, Dad. All right, I got that splitter snugged up. Just kept snugging it up and then holding pressure on the pedal. We had to do it like three times to get it to stop leaking. I think we're good. 
And then uh, kind of a good thing, it looks like the ABS is holding steady and the other two unions on that uh, intermediate line look good. Uh, the cool thing is if they're leaking, you usually get a huge puddle of brake fluid, so it's pretty easy to spot. Pump it. Pull it. Down. Pump. Pulling. Down. Pump. Pulling. Down. Alright, you can release it. And the other thing to keep in mind is we've got to keep an eye on that master cylinder. Make sure it doesn't run out of fluid or we'll be bleeding this down all over again. So every time I get done, I'll go and check that master cylinder. Alright, so I just showed you the right rear. We did left rear and the right front so we're going to finish up with the left front here that right front was like didn't even have air come out of it <laughs> really well, that happened wow. <clears throat> all right pump it holding Down. Pump. Holding. Down. Pump. Holding. Down. Pump. Hold. Down. <clears throat> Pump. Holding. Down. All right, release. How's the pedal feel? Good. <clears throat> That's when you know it's a good bleed job. Feels like I'm stepping on a brick. Alright guys, pretty much bled down. Still got fluid in the master cylinder, so that's good. So, uh, be good to test drive this thing now. All right, getting the uh, splash shield tidied up in there. Probably uh, pump the brakes up again. Do one last check on the splitter. Get the wheels on there. Do a test drive. And we gotta go buy brake fluid and uh, get some rear axle oil.
All right, well, looks like we were successful. Pedal feels great now, especially with those braided lines on there. So we're just gonna have to wait for the uh, right calipers to show up for the front. We'll swap those out later. And we got enough fluid in there for the time being, so we're probably just gonna leave that and get that tidied up when the calipers get swapped. 